swashbucklers, marauders, buccaneers, or, you know, pirates. No matter what you call them, we've all heard stories about some of the most famous. But did you know that a large percentage of pirates hailed from Gallic countries? It's true. In fact, some of the most legendary pirates of all time hailed from the shores of Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. So, join our scurvy crew as we take a spyglass to a few of our favorite Celtic pirates. Hailing from the western coast of Ireland, Grace O'Malley is one of Ireland's most revered figures, and if she was a pirate, it was certainly for an honorable cause. Born in 1530 to the chief of Clan O'Malley, Grace was basically born to sail. Clan O'Malley were a seafaring people known for resisting English control of Ireland and raiding ships in Clue Bay. And Grace was no exception. Even at a young age, Grace wanted to join her father on his ship. As the legend goes, he told her that she couldn't sail because, quote, her hair would get tangled in the rigging. Not one to be stopped by something so trivial, Grace hacked off her hair, earning her her legendary nickname, Grania Veil, or Bald Grace. After her father's death in the 1560s, Grace took over the leadership of the clan. She gained the command of around 20 ships with about 200 crewmen. Despite getting married and also having to manage the daily affairs of the clan, Grace could not be kept away from the sea. Even while heavily pregnant, she led raids on English ships. According to legend, once while her ship was under attack by Barbary Corsairs, Grace gave birth below decks, then immediately went on deck to fight and rally her crew to victory. That's pretty badass. However, even with her best efforts, Grace was not able to stop the Tudors from consolidating control over Ireland. She lost her castle, her lands, and her wealth. When the English governor of the area, Sir Richard Bingham, took her brother and her son's prisoners, Grace did something maybe more daring than all of her years of piracy. She forced a meeting with Queen Elizabeth herself. O'Malley arrived in London with a dagger in her bodice, a refusal to bow, and absolutely no knowledge of the English language. But that didn't stop her. Having been formally educated, Grace was able to speak with Elizabeth in Latin, which both women knew quite well. By the end of the meeting, an agreement had been reached. The governor would be removed, Grace's lands returned, and her sons freed. In exchange, Grace would withdraw her support from the ongoing Irish Rebellion and attack only England's enemies with her ships. Well, sadly, but not surprisingly, Grace was double-crossed. She never got her lands back, and Bingham was soon reinstated. The shame of this loss caused Grace to retreat from the public eye for the rest of her days. Most of the rest of her life is, in fact, largely unknown to us. That said, Grace O'Malley died around 1603, leaving us a legend of a pirate queen of Ireland. So, let's take a look at the single most famous pirate to come out of Scotland, William Kidd. This daring captain was not just a famous Scot, but a famous early American. And he is responsible for one of the most enduring myths in all of pirate history. Born in Dundee sometime around 1654, William Kidd never spent much time in Scotland. At a young age, he moved to a newly acquired colony that the English had taken from the Dutch. It was a little place named uh, New Amsterdam, though you might know it better as New York City. While in New York, Kidd joined an Anglo-American ship to help fight in the Nine Years' War. At one point during the campaign, the crew ousted their captain, held an election, and named William as their new leader. Thus, Captain Kidd was born. Following the war, Captain Kidd was hired by the English government to help hunt pirates in the Indian Ocean. In 1696, he obtained a letter of marque, gathered a crew, and set sail around the Cape of Good Hope. Unfortunately, Kidd was not as good of a pirate hunter as he was a wartime seaman. The voyage was an absolute disaster, and the expedition was bleeding money. This was a sure way to make a crew restless and even mutinous, so to mollify his men, Kidd began raiding trade vessels in the Indian Ocean. On January 30th, 1698, Kidd took his greatest prize, the massive Indian-owned treasure ship, the Kada Merchant. This 400-ton vessel, under contract to the French, was weighed down by gold, silver, silks, and other valuables a king's ransom. However, when news of the raid reached England, the government was less than pleased. Diplomacy and all that, don't you know? 
It seemed Kid had exceeded his mandate, and thus his fate was sealed. He would forevermore be a marked man, a pirate. Now, William Kidd was able to secure a pardon for his actions, but his reputation as an employable seaman was shattered, and he knew he was a wanted man. When he eventually returned to America, he couldn't be sure what would happen. Would the authorities turn a blind eye? Would he be arrested on the spot, or would he be hunted down? So, well, before doing anything else, Kidd sailed out to the end of Long Island and hid a portion of his massive treasure underground. The legend of pirates hiding buried treasure was thus born. As it turned out, the good captain was right to be suspicious. Upon returning to New York, he was placed under arrest by the colonial governor, Richard Coote, Earl of Bellamont. Bellamont had been a private backer of Kidd's pirate hunting voyages, and was worried now that Kidd's slide into piracy would blow back and hurt his political status. So rather than respect the pardon, he had Kidd arrested and packed him off to London for trial. Well, the trial was largely for show, and the infamous Captain Kidd was found guilty of murder and piracy. He was hanged, and his body left to rot over the River Thames, as an example. But was Kidd really guilty? Some say no. Evidence that could have supported his innocence, specifically his original letters of Mark, was withheld from the court. It could be said that Kidd was never a real pirate in the first place under English law, since he had apparently never taken an English ship. Well, that debate may go on until Judgment Day. But regardless, the name of Captain Kidd ranks among the greatest of all legendary pirates. Anne Bonny is perhaps the most famous female pirate in history. She was born Anne Cormac in County Cork around 1698, the result of an affair, and was forced to pretend to be a young boy for much of her early life. Why? Well, it was part of her father's attempts to protect his reputation, basically. Of course, this really didn't work for very long, and the family was forced to immigrate to South Carolina. In 1711, when she was just 13, Anne's mother died. And it seems that around now, she developed what one observer called a fierce and courageous temper. To put it more accurately, she became a violent and angsty teenager. On more than one occasion, young Anne attempted to murder somebody, and she actually did succeed once. When Anne secretly married a poor sailor named James Bonney, her father disowned her and kicked her out. As for James Bonney, well, he had a somewhat unusual job. He was a professional snitch. Essentially, he made cash by reporting the locations of wanted pirates to the royal authorities. So in a weird sort of a career move, the young couple traveled to the Bahamas, which at the time was ruled over by a confederation of freebooters known as the Pirate Republic. The Bonnies settled in and James set about spying on various pirate crews. Meanwhile, Anne was ashore and bored out of her mind. She quickly gained a reputation for heavy drinking and sleeping around. After a time, she became enamored with a certain pirate captain by the name of Calico Jack Rackham. It was a match made in infamy. From 1718 to 1720, Anne sailed with Rackham aboard his ship, the William. This charming couple sailed the Caribbean, looting ships as they pleased. It was scandalous, even by pirate standards. For instance, even though she was adept at disguise, Anne would make a point of appearing on deck in women's clothing. This was a bold thing to do because most people considered it bad luck to have women serving aboard a ship. Anne basically was telling the men to suck it up and deal. However, she would wear her disguise when they interacted with another ship. Well, in October of 1720, Anne and Jack's luck finally ran out. The William was defeated in battle with a British ship of the line and captured. Most of the survivors were hanged, including Captain Calico Jack. However, Anne gained a reprieve by pleading her belly. This was an old legal tactic that granted a temporary stay of execution if a woman was pregnant. However, once she gave birth, she would be put to death. Now, while we have records showing how some of the Williams crew died in prison, Anne's fate is less sure. There is no record of her giving birth, and there's no record of her execution. She basically just vanishes from history. If she did escape hanging, some historians theorize that she may have returned to South Carolina to live out the rest of her days, but we'll never know for sure. What we do know is that Anne Bonny's exploits earned her a place among the most famous pirates of all time.
Our final Celtic pirate is one of the most notorious and also a Welshman. During his life, this predator dominated the waters of the Atlantic, fought the great powers from Canada to Central Africa, and captured more than 400 ships. One of the most successful pirates of all time, his name was Bartholomew Black Bart Roberts. Born in Pembrokeshire in southwestern Wales around 1682, much of Robert's early life is unknown. We do know that he was born with the name John Roberts. Why change it? Nobody can say. Before John became Bartholomew and became a pirate, he was just a normal sailor aboard a merchant vessel. There's no indication that he ever sought out a life of crime. His career, so to speak, began in 1719 when his ship was attacked by fellow Welshman and pirate Howell Davis. Roberts was taken captive following the attack and quickly found a new home with the pirates, not to mention a very true friend in Davis. Accounts say that Davis was so excited to have another person to speak Welsh to that he immediately gave Roberts a promotion. When Davis died following a botched raid on a Portuguese fort, the crew elected Roberts as the new captain, thus Black Bart the pirate was born. His first act as captain was to murder the people who had killed his former captain. In a daring nighttime raid, Bart's men are laid waste to the Portuguese colony. For nearly three years, Roberts would raid trade routes from the Caribbean to Newfoundland and all the way across to Gabon in Central Africa. Bart's fleet included dozens of vessels. His flagship, the Royal Fortune, struck terror in the hearts of sailors across the Atlantic. Bart's reign of terror lasted until February of 1722, when in the waters of Cape Lopez, off the coast of Gabon, the Royal Fortune was cornered by HMS Swallow. The ships engaged in battle and Roberts was killed by grape shot. Before Royal Fortune could be captured, Roberts crew fulfilled their leader's last wish, which was to be buried at sea. While the battle still raged, the remaining pirates weighed down Bart's body and threw it into the ocean, never to be seen again. Bartholomew Roberts was certainly one of the most successful pirates of all time. He rose from nothing, struck terror, and captured over 400 ships, you cannot discount that at all. You know, the one thing that struck me when we were recording this was the fact that all of these people were talking about their careers only lasted like a few years. I mean, talk about live fast, die young. Two, three years as a successful pirate, and then you're <coughs> done? I don't know, man. Doesn't seem like a really good career path. Uh, tell us what you think in the comments, of course. If you're curious about other Celtic history topics, we do have some other videos over here about that. And if you really like what we're doing, we would always, always appreciate it if you help us fight the scurvy forces of the algorithm by liking us, subscribing, and ringing the bell to get the notifications.